Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Schmatz, and I'm a business development manager for Trinamics, a brand of BASF focused on rapid decision making through optical imaging technologies. Today, I'm here to showcase our near infrared spectroscopy solutions and how they can be leveraged to enable various circular economy opportunities. As a quick precursor, spectroscopy refers to the interactions of light with matter and the information we can pull from those interactions. As a very relatable example, the human eyes are a form of spectrometers. Our eyes view the world as light bouncing off of objects and reflecting into our eyes, which are then translated into what we see as colors. Our brain takes this information and uses it for rapid decision making. For instance, say you're in the store shopping for bananas. You see brown bananas, yellow bananas, and green bananas, and know either through personal or shared experiences that the yellow banana is ripe. To this end, we've used the way that light interacts with those bananas to make a rapid decision of which one is ripe a perfect example of how spectroscopy can be used to enable rapid decision making. While our eyes are great spectrometers, they are limited to visible light, or what we think of as colors. However, there are many other types of interactions of light and matter that we can't see, but still hold a lot of valuable information. One of those is near-infrared light, which we cannot see with our eyes, but which can be made visible through our handheld device here. Let me give you an example. If you were to look at my shirt, you could probably tell me what color it is but you are less likely to be able to tell me what material it's made out of. However, with our device, we can simply click into our textiles app. I can take this device up to my shirt. I click once for a scan. And within seconds, we get a readout that this is indeed a cotton shirt. As another example, I could back out to our skin app. And now instead, I can take this device, put it up to the skin on my arm. Again, click once for a scan. And within seconds, I get a readout of a lipid level and moisture level, or in other words, how oily and how dry my skin is. Similar to our eyes, this device is recording the light that's reflected off of these surfaces and using it to make rapid decisions. However, while our eyes send this data to our brains to be processed, this device sends this data to our cloud-based analytical platform to make sense of the data and give us instant feedback, allowing us to make rapid decisions. And while I like to show the versatility of this device for things like clothes and skin, the biggest impact we've seen on the circular economy is our app for doing plastics identification. So if I click out, head into our plastics app, I can now take something like this household cleaning container, take our device, I take one scan, and with a few seconds, we can see what the material is made out of and how to properly sort it. In this case, it's a high-density polyethylene container. So sorting is essential in the recycling infrastructure because something like this high-density polyethylene container cannot be effectively reprocessed with something like a low-density polyethylene grocery bag or a PET water bottle. So essentially, the performance of a recycled material is highly dependent on how well it was sorted early on in the process to a clean stream of separate plastics. This is why almost all curbside recycling programs feed into an industrial sorting facility that currently uses near-infrared spectroscopy on an industrial scale to sort plastics in a fast and efficient way. So you may ask yourself, where is our device used if on many household plastics there's already a label telling you what plastic it is or it's making its way through one of these curbside recycling facilities? But the answer to that is there's many plastics that exist in our world that either are not labeled or are not making their ways effectively through our curbside recycling program. A good example of this is this coat hanger here. I recently had the opportunity to visit a polypropylene recycler and have a vivid memory of pallet loads of thousands of these coat hangers coming into their plant. They told me that they had been contracted by a retail store to recycle these coat hangers, but they needed to be sure that they were indeed polypropylene in order to accept them. Otherwise, they risk either damaging their equipment or their final product. So with our device, you could take this coat hanger, take a scan, and within seconds, get the confirmation that indeed, we are looking at a polypropylene coat hanger, and this can effectively make their way through their recycling and into their final product. And while there are many ways that our technology can enable these traditional recycling channels, what excites us most around the circular economy is ways that our device can enable small, decentralized, and specialized recycling programs that address gaps in our current system of materials that aren't making their way through curbside recycling programs. A good example of this is carpet fibers. 
So carpets are traditionally made with plastic fibers, but they cannot make their way through a traditional curbside recycling program because they can't be collected, sorted, or effectively reground in these facilities. Because of this, a separate ecosystem exists for carpet fiber recycling, and they rely on tools like ours to have fast, portable, affordable, and accessible access to sortability. This provides these recyclers the ability to create clean streams of the recycled carpet. So in these facilities, a truckload will pull up with a bunch of used carpet fibers, and operators will take each carpet out, take a scan, and within seconds, get a readout of what the material is so they can effectively sort it into the proper pile. In this case, we're looking at a PET carpet. And so while carpets is one example of an unconventional recycling stream that we can enable through this technology, things like fishing nets and lines, textiles and apparel, and construction waste can all benefit from this technology, as well as individual efforts like river cleanups, beach cleanups, and even upstart recycling programs in small rural communities. All can benefit from the increased ability to sort plastic waste, which is just a click away with our device. We're proud to be part of this movement to address these gaps in our recycling infrastructure. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this exciting new technology with us. And we look forward to seeing what you can do with this technology to enable new opportunities for the circular economy. BASF, we create chemistry.